Welcome everyone to the 2025 Ram 1500 Tungsten Edition. And this is a new type of video. It's a full, true first impressions video. I literally just got this truck from the media fleet, but it's a mighty first impression because this is a mighty truck for the 2025 model year. And we're going to take it on a little bit of a trip to an airport to really test it out in the conditions. I think it's also really good on in, in addition to hauling stuff and towing driving comfortably here we have the 2025 1500 of course in this highest specification tungsten tungsten trim it's over ninety thousand dollars as configured and it's a beast of a vehicle here it is in a very auto stated billet silver paint you can get different paint options though i really like the new front fascia for the 1500 really nice bold led headlight design here bold new grill shape i'm really excited to see the new ev and rev style or plug-in hybrid style or whatever that new range extending version they have is coming out really soon because that's going to look even cooler see the ram tungsten logo over here really nice tasteful wheel design actually for this luxury truck and of course under the hood here we have the sst ho and that is the all new twin turbo in line six from the Slantis Group, the GME T6HO high output, and it's making 540 horsepower here. Pretty impressive engine, and I really have been enjoying it so far, just driving around for this first time. And we have a nice new tasteful rear end design, nice new LED headlights, a little bit of a fresh design. We have a power rear tailgate over here. This one is a nice luxurious tonneau cover with a cargo divider back here, spray and bed liner, loads of fun accessories, and it is truly power. It goes right up. Nice dual exhaust over here as well as a side step. And we have two Ram boxes actually with interior illumination within the Ram box. Really nice, nice amount of storage over here. And it is lockable, which is a nice touch as well. Check out how much rear cargo room you have back here with this blue kind of white style interior. Really funky stuff here with a Klipsch audio system as well, a reference style audio system. You know, I'll do all the fun stuff and features in my full impressions, but there are speakers literally everywhere in this interior. Let's hop inside these super luxurious seats as well that have tungsten in them and we'll go take this thing on a drive we do have a pretty long drive actually so i'm going to open up our maps here and so i don't blind you guys in apple carplay just check out how big apple carplay actually is let's head off we have a nice metal here a very solid feeling shifter here this is actually the best one i think ram has done feels very solid and not cheap whatsoever and my genuine first impressions coming off of this is being someone who doesn't typically drive large pickup truck vehicles, it's huge. <laughs> it's a very, very big vehicle, obviously, but that's pretty similar to all of the vehicles in this pickup truck class, the F-150, the Sierra, the Silverado, and of course this 1500, and the Tundra, and the Titan, which is going away. But this new 1500 is a monster. This truck is truly feature loaded from heads up displays to that audio system to air suspension to sport modes to i mean it's endless we have massaging cooled seats we have voice control it, there's so much stuff here it's just it's just kind of a feature overload and we have this latest generation you connect style infotainment system in here so we have passenger display on this one this extended screen here loads of trailers of features as well there's even an optional off-road package that this one doesn't even have um so you can get even more more stuff in here we have a full digital cluster up here and this one actually can drive itself so it has a, it has this little ram logo here on a steering wheel in the center console here that's going to activate that driving features here and this whole screen setup is very similar to what you're going to find in like a wagoneer or um the new grand cherokees um so if you're familiar with those vehicles this is a very nice familiar system to you lots of fun th things in here it's really high quality premium leather seats again these seats have so much control massage cooling heating and a very 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 good massage at that so we're going to come out um to the highway here let's open up this twin turbo inline six just a little bit whoa it's a potent powertrain and i have to say it's incredibly smooth one of the nice smooth just engines i've experienced so far in a lot of these modern vehicles and that's the beauty of an inline six inline sixes are inherently smooth powertrains and i'm kind of happy they went with this powertrain because it produces a lot of nice power and torque very quickly for you which is going to be a nice feeling in a pickup truck and of course there's a standard output and high output version of these engines 
and hopefully i'm hoping down the road we're going to have um maybe a hybrid or plug-in hybrid versions of it come out because i think this engine has a lot of potential still under the hood and it's going to be making its way through jeep it's going to be waking its way up in dodge soon it's coming to a lot of new vehicles so this is just one of the many applications to come of this powertrain and honestly pretty good replacement for a hemi v8 the only downside is you lose that v8 sound but i honestly can live with it because this car honestly feels so smooth comfortable and that's what a luxury truck is it's smooth comfortable and isolates you it, it, while also having that capability of the, the bed the towing capability and all that stuff there as well so honestly good impressions off the start this air suspension ride is just sublime it's really good actually it kind of just dances across the road so subtly it's like it's tiptoeing across bumps and undulations and just because of the size of this vehicle and the weight of this vehicle you really don't feel much it almost feels like an ev in that sense where it has that weight and a good suspension to kind of dampen out all that fun stuff now Again, power is really good. We also have drive modes here, which are located on the steering wheel. I wanna pop it into sport mode for you guys, because shockingly, it does have a sport mode. I don't want tow haul mode. Like I said, some of the software is a little bit glitchy sometimes. It doesn't like to select things, but you do get a cool animation when you, that kind of confirms you're in a certain drive mode. Um, and here we actually have traction off so it actually turns traction off when you are in sport mode it lowers you down to the aerodynamic ride height for better control and aerodynamics as well it usually will do that on the highway just to help you with aero and let, let me tell you this engine is a beast it really gets up and goes really fast um you hear those turbos spool up very aggressively as well i also wasn't expecting that the only thing really nice power there i'm really excited to, to try this in the upcoming new charger daytona gas version um, but what i was saying was the only real issue here is the exhaust is just not good and i mentioned that a little bit earlier you're losing that v8 sound and inline sixes can sound very very good but i'm surprised they didn't tune this to sound a little bit crazy that might be for that other unique version that's coming out that has more of a performance edge to it again this is more luxury focused trucks here in the tungsten so they're probably going to want to be focusing more on luxury and power and just comfort and smoothness versus loud sounds and crazy abilities um this has crazy abilities on the luxury side though Let's pop it back over into auto mode. I think that's the best mode to normally leave it in. Um, you also have four wheel drive auto, two wheel drive, four high and four low right at your fingertips. And they all work and kind of transition quite easily. If you're really gonna want the best fuel economy out of this whole powertrain, just pop it back into um, two wheel drive. It's rear wheel drive, which is pretty much what you're gonna be driving most of the time. Um, and yeah, it's just really comfortable. And for the size of this thing on the road, I have to say the safety systems really keep it in lanes very well. And I do, really want to test out this self-driving style system that we do have here on the ram so let's try it out. i actually have not even tested it yet <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna be a, a first look test right here so let's pop on our little ram logo here it says acting driving assist ready i'm gonna press set and voila it's set so we have our set speed here we have a distance control very easy to maneuver right there i really like that um that's about it now i don't believe it's available to go in that full kind of hands-free style driving mode just yet i think it's only on select roads i do not believe this is a road that will do that because i know from experience this whole thing will light up green when it can has that full like, steering assist but we can check by cycling through some of these screens here to see if we can go to our safety system display it says no hands-free look forward so i actually really like how they tell you that it's not in hands-free mode instead of just giving you interesting icons and uh, now it's doing hands-free look at that <laughs> just as i was poking it to do it um, and i like the little ram logos on here it's a really cool touch around the vehicle really like that we have this green um motif around it to show you that you are truly in that hands-free driving mode I, I think that's a great thing because sometimes you don't always know there's like blue colors or different colors around you green and bold green saying hands-free is a great way to let people know that you're in a hands-free mode because it can be confusing across different vehicles for a lot of different people but for now we're in some traffic no lanes really right now we're merging so we have to turn it off um you know passenger screen you cannot see obviously as a driver it has that um coding on there where you can't see it but obviously passengers can see it personally i did sit in it and look at it it's kind of you know a gimmick every single manufacturer that makes passenger screens personally to me is a gimmick i never found the point of them um yeah you can plug in an hdmi if you have the time to do so for a passenger i think you can connect like a wireless headphones to it and you can view the cameras on here and you can only view like the ram built-in navigation but that's pretty much about it 
So, you know, it's there. I honestly would just leave it off, um, even if I was a passenger, unless I get really bored. I do like how you have two wireless chargers up front here. They call them the Ram Charger. <laughs> a little bit of an Easter egg to the actual Ram Charger. Um, but, you know, some cool stuff in there. So much endless amounts of storage. Um, pretty good visibility as well in here. And I love the leather stitching all across the dash. It does elevate that um, feel as well. But. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna turn on my massage. Let's check out our massage modes here. We have waterfall, lower back, lower back, and waterfall are really, really good. Um, honestly, really good uh, a massage system. Some massage systems feel like they're just poking you. Um, I'm gonna have to say GM's massage systems really don't feel super intense. This feels like an actual like massage chair. Like you have all those individual components of those air bladders moving your um, back together. So I honestly think it's a pretty good system. And I, I'm pleasantly surprised by it. But I will update you guys on this trip. We do have about 21 miles left, 40 minutes of a drive, and we'll see what happens. If traffic, rain, and I do want to test out this audio system along the way. Let's go. Well, hello everyone. You join me back in the Ram 1500. We're still on this journey, and this is now the second round of heavy traffic we are now hitting. Obviously, heading through Queens and rush hour, especially towards an airport, is never an <laughs> intelligent idea, but I do have to anyways. But I've learned some interesting things with this Ram 1500 over the course of this drive. I've kind of been fiddling around with some things in this interior. Oh wow, it, it, there's a lot of stuff to go through. And the first thing that I personally not too much of a fan of is how this dash can be laid out. Um, it's a fully digital cluster like I mentioned earlier, but and I like the like um, bronzish color that kind of fits with the rest of the interior. What I don't like is this screen. It's just so unusual. I hope it's coming across on camera really well. I, it's just very unusual. And I thought it was just like you can kind of select each one, which you sort of can and open it up to like the full dash page, but that's kind of tiny. Um, and these cards you can kind of like configure, but only some can have certain things on it. Very interesting. It's definitely not for everyone, but it's an option. And of course you can go to like the full screen thing and just kind of cycle through um, your own screens that you want to see. I'm more than fine enough with the speed in front of me, including the heads-up display is looking at the speed as well. Um, honestly, it's been just so comfortable. It just soaks up the bumps. It's super quiet in here. I'm just reiterating that because that's like some really high points here. Uh, it's honestly, like, it feels like the Range Rover Velar I just got out of in here. It's like that quiet and just comfortable on the road. It doesn't have the same sort of like the super high-end luxury feel to the suspension system. But again, this air suspension is pretty, pretty good actually. I um, mean, I guess just the weight of the truck, like I mentioned earlier kind of helps um, really keep this thing planted and settled on the road. Otherwise, um, the screen, again, I haven't had issues this round, but I have been able to play around with the shortcut screen here. So you can actually have some quick shortcuts here so you can uh, quick activate your surround cam if you need to, which appears to be activated by driving. And I have to say, even if it's only allowed to be on this top portion of the screen, which is a little annoying, these cameras are crystal clear i'm talking tesla clear and tesla is probably like one of the clearest and range rover and land rover the clearest camera quality on the market this is actually pretty much on par with those it's that good um so that was impressive to me and one of the other best parts of this ram 1500 tungsten is the audio system and it, it took me a little bit to kind of get used to this audio system of playing it across different genres of songs you definitely notice a little bit of a, a strengths and weaknesses as to what this clip system can do in this ram but with over 20 speakers very powerful speakers and they're literally surrounding you all over the place except for on the seats which we have seen in some other um, competition but i think that's a fine omission here we have them on a, a headrest right above us here on the door panels and the really gorgeous metal speaker covers even on the back of the seats as well and i want to play for you guys a quick audio track to see if that audio quality is able to be translated through this camera so let's go ahead and play and before we turn it up to full volume we can open up our unique clips audio system guide over here which is really just this cool display where you can play and start music from and it plays this nice animation for you um, other than that it doesn't do too much so let's test that out for you guys real quick now
as we can hear, they are pretty strong audio system. It can really get quite loud as well, which I quite like. But in just in some areas, I found some of these speakers to just be a little bit kind of washed out at some of these higher um, audio levels, especially behind me. You can kind of hear the speakers whirring and fuzzing just a little bit in the background. I have noticed that across some songs. Not sure if it's just this particular model, not saying it's the system, but that is just something I have experienced with this week. But like I said, it gets very, 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 very loud. Even if you just go up to like a 15 or a 20 on the volume level, it's it feels like max on some other cars and you still have another 15 levels of that vo volume level to even go up. So that's pretty impressive there. Otherwise, not too bad. And I hope you guys enjoyed that quick test of this Clips audio system. So far, so good. What I have not been so impressed with is actually the fuel economy. Um, we're getting, let's go back to our page if I can find it, 11.4 MPG average over 41.8 miles not super good um, especially for an engine that's meant to be um, more efficient than the V8 it's replacing while having like you know more power lower and torque now to be completely fair we've been pretty much been driving in largely this <laughs> for the whole time which is not good for fuel economy in general um, unless you're on like an EV so you can regen all the time but um, yeah so hopefully I'll have a chance to drive this a little bit longer on a longer non-traffic highway stretch to get a better impressions of fuel economy. But the EPA numbers, I believe, aren't even out yet, I think, for this vehicle. Unless they are, if they are, I'll include them within the video. Um, love the massage. I'm just going to go back to that one again. I was playing through all the different massages over this drive. Wow, that's good. Uh, that might be one of the best features of this interior so far is that massage is impressive it feels even more expensive than how expensive this truck is it's like that it's that good um other anyways i will update you guys once we reach towards our destination and hopefully maybe our fuel economy will improve on this trip well okay everyone i've reached my destination and i do have to wait for a little bit but let's check out some statistics 12.2 miles per gallon so we went up about about one mile per gallon of actual highway driving so it's definitely can go up and this says like 30 plus so i think you are driving on highway trips you know coasting more just coasting at high speed engine can rev a little bit lower this can probably get pretty good mpg but for the driving we just did you know it wasn't 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 super impressive anyways um you know this truck still is very comfortable it's quite nice in here um it's a really nice place to be for like a luxury truck and it was pretty fun on this first impression drive especially getting to drive it where i just did and i'm going to turn it off real quick i want to show you guys the coolest animation feature i've ever seen on a new pickup truck these days for the head and tail lights they're pretty cool check that out Anyways, guys, this has been a first impression of the 2025 Ram 1500 Tungsten with the new twin turbo in line six. And as always, stay tuned for more coming out car news as well as stay tuned for the full review, tour, drive, and tech tour of this Ram Tungsten coming real soon. Cheers.